Welcome to another edition of Lines and Precepts with Fee Abraham Adesonya. It's always my joy to share God's word with us. And today I have a very wonderful topic as always. I, I title it Benefits of Speaking or Benefits of Praying in Tongues. Benefits of Praying in Tongues. You see, when you know the benefits of something, you know, when, when marketers generally want to sell a product to you, they don't keep on pressing you to buy that thing, buy that thing. What they, do, they spend, the wise marketer will do is spend quality time to educate you on the importance and the benefits of that thing. When that is successfully done, you will be the one who wants to do it more. And that's what I want to do to you today. I want to, I want to enumerate and um, share with us some of the benefits of praying in tongues so that you will do more of it. I want to, I trust that, I mean, this teaching is specifically designed for those of us who are baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, okay? But if you have not been baptized also, you take this supposed to spur you up to test for it and ask God for it. God, you will receive it. It's, it's very easy. I'd like to refer you to some of our uh, teaching of us in particular that will help you at that. I think it's tied to the... Um, the Holy Spirit and His Gifts, Part 1. Go on our website, you find it, or our, our blog and our archive, you find, you find it there. But for today, this, this, this we want to see the benefits of praying in tongues. I've written down about eight of them, and then I'll share a few tips about praying in tongues too with us in the little time that we have. One, one benefit of praying in tongues is that you give thanks well. You give thanks well. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, in fact, to do you good to read the whole of 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 from verse 13 to 17. The scripture tells us that when you when you pray in tongues, you speak in tongues, the person beside you does not hear you, but you, you are giving thanks well. That's what verse 17 in particular says. He says you give thanks well, very well, but the person beside you is not hearing. But one thing is established. When you pray in tongues, you are giving thanks well. That is, that's the perfect way to give thanks to God. Perfect way to give thanks to God. Oh, you want to worship God? You want to really praise God? Thank Him for what He is and who He is to you, rather, and what He's doing in your life for everything. Praying in tongues does that for you. In fact, most of the praying in tongues that we do, most of it is actually adoration to God as you may discover by experience, by experience. So the, what the perfect way to give thanks to God, of course, we can give thanks to God in our understanding, but that's its limitations. But when you give God thanks in, 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 uh, in tongues, oh, that's, that's another level altogether. You know, someone said that if you, if you speak to a man in a language he understands, you speak to his head. But if you speak to him in his own native language, you speak to his heart. I believe that's exactly what speaking in tongues and praying in tongues does with respect to God. You speak to the very heart of God. You speak to the very heart of God. Let's move on now. What other uh, benefit do we stand to gain from praying in tongues? Two, you bypass the limitations of praying in your own understanding. By now, if you have been praying at all, you will know that there is limitation to praying in your own understanding. I've had people ask me, and say, well, I, I would love to pray for longer, but I don't just know what to say. That's, that, that's a limitation. I mean, after 5, 10, 15 minutes, the heart of what to say, that's a limitation of praying your own understanding. Another limitation of praying your own understanding, as we see in, in Romans 8, verse 26 uh, to about 27, 26 in particular, it says, we, the Holy Spirit, the, the Spirit help us our infirmities. Uh, with groanings that cannot be uttered, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmity. It's a weakness. The word infirmity there means weakness. We don't know what to pray for as we even ought to. So the Holy Spirit comes in there by all, taking hold with our spirit and when we pray together, we pray in the Holy Ghost. That's what we are doing. We are praying together with the Holy Spirit. And it helps us to make intercessions according to the will of God. I'll get to that shortly. 
But then you bypass the limitation of not knowing what to pray or how to pray. Sometimes you are in a dilemma. You don't just know what to pray, how to even go about it. Praying the Holy Ghost comes in and at such a point. Another limitation of praying and understanding sometimes because praying and understanding requires your mind. Sometimes your mind is distracted. But praying the Holy Ghost helps you. Because when you pray, the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 14, that your, ma- your mind is unfruitful, but your spirit prays. So, it doesn't matter what the state of your mind. Praying in tongues helps you bypass that limitation. So, you bypass the, the limitations of praying your understanding when you pray in tongues. Another benefit, you are able to pray in line with the specific will of God. This is key because... The will of God is very important and sacrosanct to prayer. God will answer you. And you, are, you can be sure of answer and speed of answer when you are praying in line, in tandem with the specific will of God for that situation. Remember 1 John 5 verse 14 to 15 says, This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, verse 15 says, we know we have the petition that we desire. If we ask anything according to his will. So, the will of God is very key. When you know the will of God and you are able to pray according to the will of God, you are shooting on targets and you never miss. The issue is that we don't always know, at least not in full details, the specific will of God concerning every situation we want to pray about. And that's where praying in tongues comes handy. As you pray in tongues, the Spirit of God guides your prayer and then it becomes on target. Romans 8 verse 27 says, If the Spirit helps us to make intercession according to the will of God. He says it makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So the Spirit of God takes hold with our spirit and then we are praying a calculated a well-targeted prayer. That is why if you pray in the Holy Ghost, you will never know anything called unanswered prayers. That's a wonderful benefit there, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. Let's move on. There are yet many, many more. Time will not permit us to see all. In fact, there are even health benefits to praying in tongues. I encourage you to Google that out. you find that wonderful. Very wonderful. Health benefits to even pray in tongues. Let's move on to number four that I've written here. You eliminate the possibility of anybody if dropping on your prayer. Even the devil. You know. Every possibility of anybody is dropping on your prayer. You know, that that's that may look very simple, but when you are in the midst of people, that be, that's a legitimate fear. Sometimes you don't know what we don't want other people to hear what you are praying about. And that happens to every one of us. Praying in tongues is the way to go. That solves that problem. Not even the devil can eavesdrop on your prayers because First Corinthians 14 verse 2 says, He that speaketh in unknown tongues, he that prays in unknown tongues, he said he speaketh to God and not unto any man. For no man understands what he said. Albeit in the spirit he speaks mystery. You are speaking in a coded language. You know? Nobody can eavesdrop. No demon. No, so that by the time the answer comes, everybody is shocked. Because you have bypassed the possibility of anybody is dropping on your prayer. <laughs> Isn't that good? That's a secret weapon. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. Let's move on. Number five. You edify or build up or charge up your spirit when you pray in tongues. I've said one, you give thanks well. Perfect way to give thanks to God. Two, you bypass the limitations of praying your own understanding. Praying your own understanding has limitations. But when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you bypass that. Three, you are able to pray in line with the specific will of God so that your prayer is targeted, well targeted. Four, you eliminate the possibility of anybody, including the devil, is dropping on your prayer. And five, you edify or build or charge up your spirits. Oh, (laughs) amen. Imagine, you have a device, electronic device, running down, you plug it to the power source. That is exactly what praying in tongues does for you. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 4, the Bible says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, he said he edifies himself. The word edify is from, I mean, it shares the same, I mean, his cousin, let me put it away, or brother with the word edifice. That's more familiar with you. Edifice, that's a building. 
So when you are in the scriptures, you are defining yourself, you are laying blocks upon the other. You are building a block. So that, that your spiritual growth depends on praying in tongues a lot. You are building up yourself. You are charging up yourself. So you are you are spiritually fit at all times, praying in, the, in tongues. You are continually filled with the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues. So that at any time T, you are charged. Hallelujah. You don't need to go and start saying, okay, let me go. And then, no, at any time T, you are fully charged and ready to discharge. <laughs> Amen. So you edify yourself. Praying in tongues keeps your spirit high, in shape, in form, and charged up. You know, I was telling a friend of mine, I said, I don't know the reason why people smoke whatever they smoke or inhale anything just to be high. There's a cheaper, better, faster way pray in the Holy Ghost. You'll be high for longer, for better, and you're even healthy with it. Try it. Jude verse 20, the Bible says, Beloved brethren, building up yourself on your most holy faith, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. You charge yourself. Let me move on. Time for time's sake. Uh, Number six, praying in tongues charges the atmosphere and switches on the power of God. So not only does it edify you, it also charges the atmosphere and switch on the power of God. The power of God is always present, but you see, sometimes it's shunted, maybe for certain things in the environment. Time will not permit me to explain more to that, but that is true. You find that one time, Mark chapter 8, I think from verse 22, Jesus had to take a man out of his city to heal him. And when he finished healing him, he told him not to go back to that city. That tells us something. Something was not right about the atmosphere of that time. I think it was Bethsaida. So, but there's a way to charge the environment. You come in a place, as you pray in tongues, you charge up yourself. After a while, you start discharging to the atmosphere and condition the atmosphere to be conducive for the power of God to flow. That works. You can work in your home, in your office, anywhere, in your church, in a meeting. You charge up the atmosphere. Atmosphere. And, and switch on the power of God. Number seven, advantage and benefits of praying in tongues. Praying in tongues opens the door to the manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit. You see, concerning the gifts of the Spirit, uh, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, uh, discerning of spirits, prophecy, working of miracles, uh, diverse kind of tongue interpretation, gifts of faith, and all the all, all the nine gifts of spirit as listed in First Corinthians chapter twelve. You want to experience more of it? Do more of praying in tongues. The praying in tongues is the doorway. As you do open that door, as need arises, the gift of the spirit begins to flow in your life. Do a lot of it before long. As you are praying in tongues, you soon burst forth to prophecy. The word of knowledge it just begins to flow because you have opened the tap so to say you have opened the tap what more advantage do we have praying in tongues the eighth one i want to share praying in tongues helps you download instructions and direction from god when you pray in tongues what you are doing is that you are browsing the mind of god you are browsing the mind of god the scripture says in proverbs 20 verse 27 he says, the, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching the inward part of the belly, searching or browsing. When you pray in tongues, the spirit of God takes hold of your spirit, which is a candle and a searchlight, and you are searching the inward part. Every deep secret things in the spirit, the Lord begins to point. It's like a radar. You browse and you are picking up signals. You want to know what God wants you to do concerning a thing. Spend time to pray in tongues concerning the, uh, uh, on that thing. And you begin to receive instructions and directions. So, you, 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 when you pray in tongues, you download instructions and directions from God. Let me wrap up with two, two, two tips. I've shared about hate, uh, benefits of praying in tongues with us. I want to share with you just two, and I close with the two tips to praying in tongues uh, that will help you in praying in tongues. One, if you want to know what God thinks about a matter, put it on the table of your heart. And begin praying in tongues on that thing, like I've said earlier. And then you watch to see what God will say. You know, about Cook chapter 2, he said, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon my on the tower and watch to say what God will say to me and what I shall answer when I'm reproved. I will watch to say, to see. So while you are praying about it, you are praying, is it a job? You pray, pray, pray in tongues over it. And then you begin to receive instructions, direction, insight into that thing. 
That's how it works. Then it comes in forms of pictures. Take note, that's God talking to you about that thing you are praying about. Sometimes it's even giving you further prayer points to pray on those things. Another tip I want to give to you, you are praying in tongues generally. Just generally. Maybe you start, like I said, most of it is, most of our praying, a lot of it, don't let me say most, a lot of our praying in tongues, actually adoration to God. And then the Spirit of God begins to put pictures in your heart. That's God trying to tell you, focus your prayer on this. And then you pray in spirit concerning. Then you also pray in understanding concerning. That's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, I believe verse 15, is that I will pray in the spirit and I will pray in the understanding also. When you pray in the spirit, which is primary, the spirit of God even begins to give you prayer points and things you need to pray about that. And then you can now go ahead and begin to pray that thing in understanding. Some of it will be instructions, some of them will be prayer points, whatever way. But take note of those things. My aim today, and which I believe I've been able to achieve, is to spur you up to pray more in tongues. You know, Apostle Paul shared one of his secrets to us. He said, I pray in tongues, First Corinthians 14 verse 18. I pray in tongues more than you are. Do a lot of it. Do more of it. Don't do it every once in a while. Don't do it when, so to say, the environment is charged up. You use it to charge the environment up, you see? And then do a lot of it. You will see your life change drastically. You see your life change drastically. God bless you. See you next time. Bye-bye.